Hey, this is Matt O'Leary, and this is a review of the ninth album from one of my favorite bands, Dr. Dog. I guess if I had to summarize the genre of this band, it's 60s Beatles zombies-esque psych pop with some rootsy country twangs and James Brown soul thrown in along the way. And listening to Dr. Dog starting about a decade ago has really opened my mind to this low fidelity, slacker, and carefree rock music. The Psychedelic Swamp is a concept album, and the concept all revolves around this character named Phrases, and uh, he's trying to escape a really dull and, and bleak reality and get to an alternate universe called the Psychedelic Swamp. And Dr. Dog is trying, and all the music on this album is received through sort of like radio signals that they're, they're getting from the Psychedelic Swamp. So this isn't really too complicated of a concept, especially like uh, the Dream Theater album that I just reviewed. And Dr. Dog, for the songs on this album, actually went back and remade or covered some of their earliest recordings way back from, from 2000 or 2001, right before Toothbrush came out, which... A lot of people consider their first album, um, so they're remaking these songs and also adding some along the way. They actually did a show back in September with a theater group um, in which they, they played almost the entire album. This was in Philadelphia where the band comes from. Uh, they played almost the entire album and they kind of created the swamp atmosphere on stage. The album begins on a really low energy and low tempo note with Golden Hind, which starts with this woozy guitar lead. And then, and then all of a sudden, this unfamiliar, very Johnny Cash-like voice enters. And I actually looked into this, and that voice is Doug O'Donnell, who actually played with the band back um, before they really made it. And the sweet finger-picking and, and ocean wave layers during the verses make me feel like this is a more atmospheric approach than uh, previous Dr. Dog, hinting at this kind of psychedelic element. And then after that, we begin with the more typical back and forth of Toby Lehman songs and Scott McMicken songs. This is a really important aspect of any Dr. Dog album experience. The band's sound gets compared to the Beatles a lot, but I think the biggest comparison between those two groups is that there are two songwriters that really contribute a lot to the group and contribute equally. Um, and, and each of them, Toby and Scott, kind of throw in a handful of songs for each album for them to sing on their own. Uh, and if you're familiar with the band's content, uh, you'll really be able to tell the difference pretty easily. Um, but also just because they have very much opposite sounding voices. Scott has a really high and nasally tone, and uh, Toby has a more sultry and raspy croon. And I think it's really interesting how both of them seem to have kind of the goofiness of Paul McCartney, but also the strange poignancy of John Lennon. I mean, those are just ingredients for a great band. I tend to gravitate a little bit towards Scott's songwriting, but I think the band is much, much better with the diversity of their two styles. My two favorite tunes from this thing are actually Scott McMicken's songs, uh, the first one being Swampadelic Pop and then Fire On My Back. The first of those is a great reinterpretation of the original recording from 2001, which was almost unlistenable. I love the addition of those walking, really fuzzy bass lines, and then also that living in the psychedelic swamp kind of middle section. But the clear choice for the single on this album, I think it was pretty obvious and they chose the right one, Bring My Baby Back. This is just an instant Dr. Dog classic that juxtaposes the robotic and synthetic drum tones and beats with this more country and classic Americana sound. It's just a great song. There are also a good amount of filler songs that are meant to kind of fill out the storyline and also uh, just create that atmosphere, like I said. These are made up of, of repetitive, very holy drug couple sounding jams and then, and then kind of snippets of, of radio talk from Swamp Radio, uh, which reminds me a lot of Julian Casablanca's and, and The Voids' album uh, Tyranny, but maybe not as weird. The last really noteworthy track on this comes on Badvertise, which is a faster, punk-leaning parody of the ridiculous nature of public advertisement. With this whole concept and album, I think it shows that Dr. Dog hasn't really been touched by success. They're really in music still for the right reasons, and they haven't become jaded about it. There's always been a really attractive silliness that's permeated their music, and especially here. And also a really palpable authenticity. You can tell that these are just a bunch of guys 
playing music and deriving a primal joy from that. That sounds pretty cliche, but watching them live, you really get the sense that they're there first and foremost to entertain themselves and that the audience is just joining in that process. So this album, I think it's a really solid addition to the Dr. Dog catalog. Um, I also heard that they have another batch of songs recorded that are ready for the next album, so this band just loves being in the studio, I guess, and they built their own studio. Um, that's what the, the album B Room was about. Uh, and, and I'm just excited to see where they keep going because uh, they just keep pumping out quality. This is an 8 out of 10 for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and comment on what your favorite Dr. Dog album is. I think mine is right around the Shame Shame and, and Fate era. It's kind of weird to say, era. Uh, but anyway, uh, please check out the description box for a link to what I've been listening to in January. The new albums that I've really loved. And that's it. Thanks again. See you later.